from, and there was and there is a pray to a prayer to Anastasia here on the back. So my grandmother said, "This woman Kelly, and I was five years old. She never accepted being defeated by her master. She never accepted being enslaved, and that's why she was tortured. But she never quit." Now, Anastasia, she uh, overcame time. And you can, there are many people devoted to Anastasia until these days, which makes it really strong, the devotion to Anastasia. She was known by her miracles, her power of speech, her, her powers and knowledge and respectability among her people. So with that, my grandmother, she taught me the importance of being working for freedom to preserve our culture and our knowledge and to fight for our people through the work we, we do, through the way we are and we live. Now, I would like to share with you uh, these beautiful sculptures from artist Carmen Barros. She is representing the Orishas in these sculptures. Sculptures. She is representing different Orishas. Ah, no problem, Jose Valdo. If you haven't come here, uh, when you come back from Italy, please come get to know me. Take a tour with me in this region. Many Cariocas, many Brazilians haven't been here as well. This is a place to, to discover more about. How many people are there with me, with us together in this tour? Now I am sharing the, Yorush, the Orishas, some of the Orishas represented by artist Carmen Barros. Carmen Barros is representing here the Orisha Oshala, the father of the Orishas. And here, She's representing Odudua. Now, one important thing about the Orishas is that, as you saw in the beginning of the tour, there, are, there were many people from different parts of Africa, and they have different beliefs and religions, and many of them different Orishas. How is the sound now? There is a library there. Another part of the building outside. Is the sound back? 
Thank you so much, Alice, for letting me know. I will show you also the details of these. Hi, Leslie. Hello. Is the sound good and back? I can try and remove. Let's see. Is the sound back now? Ah, good. Thank you, Alice. Okay. Nice. Yes, back. Great. Well, I, I reconnected the, uh, the 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 microphone. So I will I will enter the room again. If the connection fails, let me know, please because the walls here are really, really thick. Just to give you an idea of the thickness of the wall, is all this thick. Can you imagine all of these with concrete stones? It makes like a blockage to, to the signal. So this, I'm glad there are many beautiful windows and large doors so we can get some signal here. Now, this sculpture of the Osain is representing the spirits of the leaves. And I, I invite you to take a postcard of this and I explain you why this is so important for me. Hello, Leslie. Osain. So it's the ancestral people of all over the world. They all believe in the power of nature. They believe that every natural element will have spirit will have soul and Osain is the Odisha of the leaves of the which has and holds the knowledges of the medical herbs for taking baths, bathing, showers and so that's why when we here in Brazil go to the waterfalls we know the importance of being in that natural temple of the forest and letting ourselves being embraced by Oshun, the goddess of the waters, which brings the waters clean and which brings the waters filled with the powers of the leaves, of the rocks, of the mineral rocks, and all of this is seen as medicine for us. Hi, Lauren. Have for thanks for joining. So that's why many of us and I myself, I run tours in the Tijuca National Forest, where I go myself to recharge my energies, to shower in the waters of Mother Oshun, in the waterfalls, and to clean my energy and soul, to be very peace, peaceful and feel peaceful and energized again. Many of us know, believe, and use the, these natural powers in order to heal ourselves. I use herbs, the natural herbs, because my grandmother taught me to make teas out of that. And I go to the waterfalls to bathe myself with the waters, which are fulfilled of this energy of minerals and leaves. Now here, the beautiful statue representing Oshun, the goddess of the sweet waters. Now I am getting to the end of this tour. Today, we were again at the museum of uh, Afro-Brazilian Museum of History and Culture, or Museum of Afro-Brazilian History and Culture. I think it's the best translation. I've been here in another time and I shared uh, other rooms. Today I showed different parts of that. So many times when I run a tour, uh, you are welcome to join again because it's another opportunity for you to ask questions of something that you were thinking and digesting from the first tour or because I will share different stories that we complement, okay? And then you have a second chance to see an, a new exhibition and so on, especially like museum tours or art tours. Afro-Brazilian tour. Yes, Jose Valdo. It's a, one of my research, Jose Valdo. I focus on that. In, our, in my Afro-Brazilian and indigenous ancestry, 
and I do the research around it and I can teach more about our culture to people around the world. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Satan, so much for your support as well. Thank you, Varga, and for joining. We arrived at the beginning, at the end of our tour, and I hope you appreciate it. Uh, and I hope I can fix my gimbal. I don't know what's going on. I'll try to figure out. And well, that's it. Thanks for keeping up with me, and bye-bye. See you soon. See you on the next adventures in, with other Hago guides and Hago guides of South America. And our tour in Itacoatiara, where I will show you tomorrow about Charles Darwin's paths in Rio de Janeiro, showing beautiful landscapes of Niterói in Rio. Oh, yes, Azevaldo, please, please. Come to other tours and ask me questions around it, and I will be very happy to answer. There are also uh, other links to my social media here on my profile on Hegel, and you can get to know more about my research as well. Bye.